So I'm going through a price leadership oligopoly, or duopoly in this case, because there's only two firms. Um, I'm going through this problem, and the demand functions are given by the demand function for firm A is up here, the demand function for firm B is here, and both firms have a marginal cost of production of $5 per unit they produce. And we do notice that the demand functions are different between the firms, they're not symmetric, and that's okay in a duopoly because sometimes firms um, are better advertisers or have other reasons why their demand function might be different. So that's allowed in a um, price leadership situation. And anytime we hear leadership, we're thinking this is a sequential moves game, so this is going to involve backwards induction. So when we approach this, we're actually going to solve firm B's maximization problem first, and then get a best response function and plug that back into firm A's problem. So let's set this up. Um, I always like to set up the simplest possible form of our maximization problem. We know that the choice variable will be price and it's going to be the price of firm B, since we're starting with firm B, the second firm to move, using backwards induction. And um, profit is just going to be price of firm B times quantity of firm B, that's revenue, minus total costs of firm B, which are going to be the $5 cost per unit they produce times the quantity of firm B. So that's just the simplest possible way of setting up our maximization problem. And then our next step is going to be to plug in our demand function for the quantities. And when we do that, um, only prices will be left, so there will be no more quantities in the equation, which makes sense since price is our choice variable and we only want prices to work with going forward. So um, we're just plugging in for QB, we're plugging in from B's maximization problem, which is 120 minus 2PB plus 2PA. And this is something to notice with these kinds of oligopoly problems. We notice there's a negative sign in front of from B's. Uh, the, the coefficient on from B's price is negative. The coefficient on from A's price is positive, which makes sense because it means when from B raises their price, they're going to sell less. That's just the law of demand. And then when from A raises their price, from B is going to sell more. So that's a uh, the standard cross price elasticity at play there. So this is price times quantity taken from the demand function minus the marginal cost of production times quantity, which once again we're going to plug in the demand function here. 2PB plus 2PA. All right, so this is a long messy problem and um, these problems involve a lot of algebra. But I'm sure you'll believe me that you can do the algebra, and this whole thing simplifies to um, it simplifies to 130 PB minus 2 PB squared plus 2 PA PB minus 600 plus. Uh, uh, minus 600 minus 10 PA. Let me make sure that's right. That is right. So all this simplifies down to that. And now we're ready to take our first order condition. Our maximization problem for firm B is set up. And we notice firm A's um, price is in there. And that makes sense. This is currently an exogenous variable. Um, so at the end of this, we're going to find the price of firm B in terms of firm A. So let's take our first order conditions um, by taking the partial derivative of our profit function with respect to the price of firm B. And here we get 130 minus 4PB plus 2PA, which implies um, when you solve the, oh, that's equal to zero. Is is our first order condition. The partial derivative with respect to the choice variable is equal to zero. So when we solve the algebra for PB, solving for PB, we get that the price of firm B should be equal to 32.5 minus, actually plus, in this case, one half PA. So now we have the price of firm B as a function of PA, and this is actually going to be our best response function. It's firm B's best response to what firm A 
chooses to do in the first round. So firm A knows that firm B is going to behave like this, and firm A is going to take that into account when they do their own maximization problem. So our next step is to set up firm A's maximization problem. And when we do that, it works exactly like firm B's maximization problem, so I could just erase these up here and give them new subscripts. The new subscripts will relate to firm A. I've just rewritten A's equation, which is just price times quantity of firm A minus marginal cost times quantity of firm A. And then, just like before, I'm going to plug in for the quantity firm A's demand function. So I can do that on this next round. Um, I'm just saving time by erasing subscripts. And we, we do keep in mind that the demand function is different, so I do need to um, plug in from A's demand function, which is 100 minus 2PA plus uh, 2PA plus 3PB minus 5, and then this is going to be, these two are going to be the same. This is just plugging it in, and you plug it in twice. So let's make those adjustments here. And we've just plugged in for our quantities, and we have a big, long function. And our next step, instead of moving on and simplifying this as it is, like we did before, we're going to actually plug in for the PBs in this equation, firm B's best response function. So firm A knows firm B is going to do that. So firm A can plug in for firm B, anticipating firm B's response. It's a little bit like bullying firm B by anticipating their behavior. So our next line is going to be a little bit messy because we're taking this really long line of math and plugging in another formula. But it's just algebra. We're just plugging in this in those two spots. So let's do this. So we have the price of firm A. I'm going to use brackets just to keep track of where we are. Times 100 minus 2PA plus 3. And here's where we plug in our firm 2's best response function. I'll erase that. 32.5 plus 0.5PB. So we just plugged in for that right there, and we have this part so far, and I'm going to take another line to do our second part. So minus 5 times 100 minus 2PA plus 3PB, except we're plugging in firm B's best response function at that point. And now we've fully plugged in everything we need to, and we notice that there's only, there should only be PAs in this equation, which there is if I did it right. Um, there's only PAs left. So this is actually going to simplify down to something very simple. And when you simplify the math, what does it look like? It's going to look like um, this 200, 200 PA minus 0.5 PA squared minus 987.5. So now we've, we've solved on the algebra and we have firm A's maximization problem and we're ready to take the first order conditions to get the optimal value that firm A should choose for their price. So let's do that. I'm going to raise the stuff up here so I have room to take my first order conditions. Okay, so the first order conditions of firm A's maximization problem, we take the partial, we take the derivative with respect to PA. It's actually not a partial derivative, it's a regular derivative to be fully technical, but um, here we go. So we've got 200 minus PA. And nothing happens there. So 200 minus PA equals 0. That's our first order condition. So clearly PA equals 200. That was, 
that's a nice round number. We're pretty happy about that. And now we just need to find the price of firm B, the quantity of firm B, and the quantity of firm A. So we know that B will respond to that price by plugging firm A's price into this function. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll know that price of firm B is firm B's best response function with firm A's price plugged in. And that's going to equal, in this case, 132.5. And to get the quantities, then, we now have our, both of our prices. To get our quantities for each firm, we just plug the prices into those demand functions. So the qu quantity that firm A will produce is equal to 100 minus 2 PA, which is 200 PA plus 3 times the price of firm B, which is 132.5. And that, when we plug that into a calculator, we get that the quantity for firm A is 97.5. The quantity for firm B is going to just be firm B's demand function, which is 120 minus 2 times PB. And the price of firm B is 132. 0.5 plus 2 times the price of firm A, which is 200. So when we plug that into a calculator, we get the quantity for firm B is 255 units. So we've fully solved this price leadership oligopoly problem, duopoly problem, by finding the price of firm A, the price of firm B, and the quantity associated with both firms.